good morning everyone so today we are going to start a new chapter which is about legendary polynomials to begin with the equation 1 minus x square y double dash minus 2xy dash plus n n plus 1 y is equal to 0 is known as the legendary equation and we will see that its solution would be called legendary polynomial here remember that n is a known negative integer so it's a integer which is greater than 0 now the first observation is that x is equal to 0 in an ordinary point while x is equal to 1 and minus 1 are regular singular points. To find the solution about x is equal to 0, it's quite easy. We take y is equal to summation a k x raised to the power k, but we are not interested in this solution and this is not the legendary polynomial. So we will look for the solution about x is equal to 1. So x is equal to 1 is a regular singular point, therefore we can think of the either Frobenius series solution or hypergeometric series solution. So we will compute hypergeometric series solution. Now legendary equation would look like x minus 1, x plus 1, y double dash plus 2x, y dash minus n, n plus 1, y is equal to 0. So if you compare we have already discussed in section 31 how to find the hypergeometric series solution. So here by comparing capital A is 1, B is minus 1. That gives me small t as x minus A by B minus A which is 1 minus x by 2. If I substitute the or if I replace the independent variable x by t then I will get an equation in t which is t 1 minus t y double dash plus 1 minus 2 t y dash plus n n plus 1 y is equal to 0. So clearly it is a hypergeometric equation. Recall the hypergeometric equation and by comparison you can see that this is my c a plus b plus 1 is equal to 2 and a b is equal to minus n n plus 1. That gives me the values of a b c. Yes. Now c is equal to 1, a is equal to minus n and b is equal to n plus 1. We can interchange the value of a and b. It won't change the solution. Now the first question is how many hypergeometric series solution we can have for the legendary equation. So recall that when we used to solve the hypergeometric equation because now t1 minus t is a hypergeometric equation. So hypergeometric equation the roots of the initial equation was 0 and 1 minus c. Now if you put c is equal to 1 you will get equal roots. In case of equal roots you get only one Frobenius solution or hypergeometric series solution. So here c is equal to 1 that tells us that we will have only one hypergeometric series solution. So I can easily write it is f of minus n, n plus 1, 1 and t. Now recall some properties of the hypergeometric series solution. So they are bounded, convergent and convergent for mode t is less than 1. Now if I try to find the other linearly independent solution, so again I have to recall that if one linearly independent or one solution is known, the other would be y2 is equal to v, y1, where v is integration 1 by y1 square e raised to the power minus p dt dt. Now, if you see this equation which we got in t, so your p is 1 minus 2t by t minus t square and it's easy observation that if you differentiate t minus t square you will get 1 minus 2t. <laughs> Therefore the integration is quite trivial and if you try to compute it then you will get integration of minus e raised to the power minus integration p dt is simply minus log t minus t square and e raised to the power minus log t minus t square is 1 by t minus t square. It means your v dash is 1 by y1 square t minus t square which I wrote as t 
वन माइनस टी सो टिल हीयर वेरी इजी कंपटीशन आर दे हैं नाउ इफ यू सी हीयर वी कैन नॉट कंप्यूट वी बिकॉज वाई वन इज अ पॉलिनोमियल इन टी इनफाइनाइट पॉलिनोमियल ओनली थिंग वी वॉन्ट टू सी फ्रॉम हीयर इज दैट is the other solution which is y2 is bounded about t is equal to 0 it is not bounded this is the only requirement we want to see so now if you write v dash as 1 by t and by y1 is square 1 minus t now y1 it is a hypergeometric solution we have already seen so hypergeometric solution it is a polynomial in t which could be something like 1 plus some constant t plus constant t square and so on and if you square it again it will remain a polynomial in t the only observation is that it should start it would start with 1 it would have a coefficient of t raised to the power 0 because 1 minus t multiplied with some polynomial of the form 1 plus c1 t plus c2 t square and so on yes and if you multiply it with 1 minus t then again it will become a polynomial which would be something like this so 1 by 1 plus b1 t plus b2 t square and so on now we know that it is convergent for more t is less than 1 therefore you can write it as 1 minus and some c1 t plus c2 t square and so on and inverse so it is the expansion of either 1 plus x raised to the power minus 1 or 1 minus x raised to the power minus 1 which again will be of the form 1 plus a1 t plus a2 t square and so on again i am telling you we are not in condition to find y2 what we are trying to do is to see that how y2 looks like and we are only interested in the first term which is this yes so now if i take 1 by t inside and integrate to have v then the first term would be log t and the remaining we are not interested because your y2 is v y1 which means y2 has a term log t and log t is not bounded about t is equal to 0 it means y2 is not bounded about t is equal to 0 it means the legendary equation has only one bounded solution and that we will call as legendary polynomial so y is equal to f of minus n n plus 1 1 1 minus x by 2 is bounded near x is equal to 1 or t is equal to 0 and it is called as legendary polynomial which is denoted as p and x remember the notation p and x also you need to remember <coughs> p and x is equal to f of minus n n plus 1 1 1 minus x by 2 now one quick question is that why we call it legendary polynomial because it's a hypergeometric series solution we must call it series not a solution but here we are calling it solution why is it we are calling it polynomial why is it so it can be easily answered if you try to expand f of minus n n plus 1 1 1 minus x pi if you remember the expansion and if you write it down then you will see that a is minus n so first term is minus n then minus n plus 1 i am taking minus common because it is 1 minus x instead of i am writing x minus 1 so it will become n n minus 1 n minus 2 and so on and when at some point of the time you will have n minus n which becomes 0 again i am repeating it is minus n minus n plus 1 minus n plus 2 and so on i take minus 1 common from all the terms and therefore it becomes n n minus 1 so on till n minus n which is 0 and that's why after certain finite number of the terms it will have only finite number of the terms p and x and that's why we call it polynomial not a series so after n plus 2th term or for n plus 2th term 
it is 0 it means pnx has n plus 1 term can you quickly try to find what is n plus 1th term so if you try to find n plus 1th term then it would be n n minus 1 n minus 2 it would be n plus 1 n plus 2 n plus n again don't get confused it should be minus n but if it is minus n it is 1 minus x so i am taking minus 1 common from here minus 1 common from here and that's why positive sign would come so the numerator would become 2n factorial it is 1 minus x by 2 and if you come if keep coming n times so the denominator becomes 2 raised to the power n and n factorial square so this is your n plus 1th term or the last term of the legendary polynomial p n x. Yes. So this is how you can write it down 2n factorial by n factorial square 2 raised to the power n x minus 1 raised to the power n. Yes. Quick observation p n 1 is equal to 1 for all n. Now let's do some exercises. The first one is express 2 minus 3x plus 4x square in terms of p and x. Now to express it from the expansion we just discussed, you need to know the value of sum of the polynomial. So from this expansion p and x, from this one, you need to find it by yourself and the quick observation would tell you that p naught x is equal to 1, p1 x is x, p2 x is 3 x square minus 2. Now for the expression 2 minus 3 x plus 4 x square, I just need x square x in terms of p and x. So this gives me x square is 2 p2 plus 1 by 3. Yes, it means my 2 minus 3x plus 4x square can be written as 2p0 minus 3p1 plus 4 and 2p2 plus 1 by 3. If you simplify it becomes 10 by 3p0 minus 3p1 plus 8 by 3p that's all next is very interesting question which says that prove that pn dash 1 is equal to n n plus 1 by 2 yes now whenever you approach the problem try to see if some hint is given in the question or not so hint is where you have seen the term n n plus 1 so it is in the legendary equation so your legendary equation is 1 minus x square y double dash minus 2xy dash plus n n plus 1y is equal to 0. If I replace y of x by pn x because I need pn dash and pn dash 1 and put x is equal to 1 then what will become the first term would be 0 1 minus x square the next term is minus 2 x is 1 pn dash 1 plus n n plus 1 is equal to 0 that gives me pn dash 1 is equal to n n plus 1 by 2 the next very important concept is Roderick's formula which says that pn x is equal to 1 by 2 raised to the power n n factorial and then n time differentiation of x square minus 1 rest to the power n. To prove this one, we are going to use the Lebanese theorem, which tells how do we compute the nth derivative of the two function u and v. Assume u and v are the function of x. <coughs> okay, so let's see this one and let's prove the Roderick's formula. So to prove it, Let's assume v is equal to x square minus 1 raised to the power n. And this v1 means v dash. 
just we are using this notation so v1 is 2nx x square minus 1 raised to the power n minus 1 i want a differential equation in v therefore i multiply both the sides by x square minus 1 and replace x square minus 1 raised to the power n by v and if i take either right hand side to the left hand side or left hand side to the right hand side then i will have 1 minus x square v1 plus 2nx v is equal to g1 okay now let's differentiate this equation a n plus 1 times using Leibniz theorem so if you differentiate it and try to use the Leibniz theorem then you can see that because of 1 minus x square you will have only three terms so we start with 1 minus x square and differentiation of v1 n plus 1 times so i denote it as v n plus 2 then Leibniz formula says that the next term is n so here n plus 1 time differentiation is there that's why the next term is n plus 1 differentiation of 1 minus x square is minus 2x and n time differentiation of v1 which is v n plus 1 then n plus 1 n by 2 minus 2 and v n similarly here you will have only two terms 2n is constant x v and n plus 1 differentiation v n plus 1 plus 2n constant n plus 1 differentiation of x is 1 and v n now if you substitute both if you add these two equation let's call them b and c so b plus c gives you this you need to try by yourself gives you 1 minus x square v n plus 2 minus 2x v n plus 1 plus n n plus 1 v is v n is equal to g now see how you can proceed further you need to prove the rotrix formula now this can be written as 1 minus x square v n double dash just to make sure it looks like the legendary equation instead of vn if i put y then you will see that it's a legendary equation yes and we know that legendary equation has only one bounded solution p and x so in case of p and x we write y is equal to p and x now you write here vn is equal to p and x and the general solution is c times p and x or you can see the other way around the legendary equation has solution p and x this equation has solution v n both must be linearly independent linearly dependent because you have only one bounded solution and therefore you can write p n is equal to c v n yes one is a constant multiple of the other the next question is how do you compute the value of c spend some time and think how do you compute this value yes to compute this value you need to recall that pn1 is equal to 1 yes that's the most important thing so we know that pn1 is equal to 1 it means i substitute it on both the sides so 1 is equal to c and dn dx raised to the power n x square minus 1 raised to the power n at x is equal to 1 now how do you compute this one we spend some time and try to find it this is c and n time differentiation of x minus 1 raised to the power n x plus 1 raised to the power n now c if any term has x minus 1 raised to the power anything then at x is equal to 1 it would always be g it means you need to find the term which do not have x minus 1 and it is only possible when you differentiate x minus 1 n times if you differentiate one time you have n x minus 1 raised to the power n minus 1 
टू टाइम एन एन माइनस वन एक्स माइनस वन रेस टू दी पावर एन माइनस टू एन एथ डिफ्रेंशिएशन वुड गिव यू एन फैक्टोरियल सो एन एथ डिफ्रेंशिएशन सो देर वुड बी सम टर्म एन एथ डिफ्रेंशिएशन एन फैक्टोरियल एक्स प्लस वन रेस टू दी पावर दिस एन टर्म्स कंटेनिंग x minus one raised to the power r at x is equal to one. It means if you substitute x is equal to one, then c n factorial n two raised to the power n that gives you c is equal to one by two raised to the power n factorial. If you substitute the value of c here, then your p n x is one by two raised to the power n n factorial. And d n d x raised to the power n x square minus one raised to the power n, which is the Rodrix formula. We will see many exercises based on Rodrix formula, but let's see one exercise which says that show that p n x can be written like this. Again, you need to see that how do you proceed further. So to proceed further. The observation here is that in the denominator k factorial n minus k factorial is there. Yes, when do you have k factorial n minus k factorial? Recall it. So it's generally when you think of a binomial expansion. So the binomial expansion of x square minus one raised to the power n. Why x square minus one raised to the power n? Because I want to use the Rodrix formula. So it is summation k from zero to n, n k, and then x square n minus k, n minus one raised to the power k, which can be written as n factorial k factorial n minus k factorial minus one raised to the power k x raised to the power two n minus two k. Yes, so this is my binomial expansion. Now Rodrix formula says that p n x is one by two raised to the power n n factorial, and then d n x raised to the power n x square minus one raised to the power n. So I can substitute the value of x square minus one raised to the power n, which I just computed. So your p n x would be two raised to the power n n factorial summation minus one raised to the power k n factorial k factorial n minus k factorial and n time differentiation of x raised to the power two n minus two k. Now n and n factorial would cancel out. And if you differentiate x raised to the power minus two k is constant, so you just need to differentiate x raised to the power two n. But when you differentiate it, then you will have the first term as two n minus two k, then two n minus two k minus one, and so on. And if you multiply and divide the numerator by n minus two k factorial, so this is one by two raised to the power n summation. Minus one raised to the power k, and what you do here is that you will get x raised to the power n minus two k, and then there are n terms are there two n minus two k, two n minus two k minus one, two n minus two k minus two, and so on. And you multiply and divide by n minus two k factorial. So this numerator would become two n minus two k factorial. Just do some exercise, and you will observe. And this summation is k from zero to n. Yes, but I need k instead of k from zero to n. I need n by two. Now, one quick observation is: observe dp by dxp x raised to the power two n minus two k is equal to zero when p is greater than n by two. Very quick observation. After half of the terms, the remaining term would be zero. 
and that's why there is no harm in writing k from 0 to n by 2 minus 1 raised to the power k 2n minus 2k factorial k factorial n minus k factorial and n minus 2k factorial okay so that's all from today's class in the next class we have to see the orthogonality property and the generating function related to legendary code.